welcome to my sewing room. Oh, we have such a wonderful show for you today. It's all about shadow trapunto by machine, of course, the easy way. The first project I have for you is this tiny little pillow with a really pretty pale, pale shadow trapuntoed flower in the middle. And this is channel quilting around the outside. It really looks nice. Then I have another really beautiful shadow trapunto pillow for you. This time there's a big, wonderful trapuntoed bow in the middle. And then there's stippling around the outside. A little bit later on, we're going to share with you how to make both of these. This is a really pretty wall hanging with shadow trapunto, uh, beautiful flowers and leaves. See how puffy it is? And a beautiful bow. And this one has stippling on the outside. Really a pretty wall hanging. Now this is shadow trapunto the really easy way. See all those pretty uh, pansies on here? Well, we went to the craft store, purchased uh, silk pansies, put them down underneath and did the shadow trapunto around them and glued a little rhinestone in the middle. Now let me turn over to the back and show you how pretty this vest is on the back. This is all stitching and you might think, well, goodness me, she's done hand quilting on that. No, no, no. This is the hand quilting look stitch that a lot of the sewing machines have today. And here's the shadow trapunto on the back. Now then, if you will come along with me to the technique boards, I will share with you just how easy it is to do shadow trapunto with channel quilting around the sides or with stippling around the sides. Shadow Trapunto is very easy if you just follow these easy steps. First, trace your design off onto your fabric, a center of the flower, a flower, and some leaves. Working foreground to background, first of all, I will put the yellow fabric behind to make the yellow center and zigzag them together, and then go back in and cut away the excess yellow fabric. Next, I will be putting the pink fabric behind to make the pink flower, and I will zigzag around and then trim it away. Here is what it looks like after the pink flower step has been done. Next will be the step with the green leaves. So I put the green fabric behind and then zigzag around the leaves and do my center embellishment and then come in and once again cut away the green fabric. You can also, around the leaves or around the whole thing, you can also do a tiny buttonhole stitch if you would like to try that rather than just the tiny zigzag. Now the puffy part comes, after you've done all of those steps and trimmed, you put your batting behind and then using an invisible or a wash away thread in the top and a regular thread in the bobbin, you tiny zigzag all the way around the outside, thus attaching the first layer of batting. Then come in and trim away the first layer of batting. Now. You put another layer, that would be the second layer of batting behind, and this time with the same thread that you're going to do either your stippling, and by the way, this is a stippling finish, and over here is a channel quilting finish. This is straight stitches crossing each other, and this is stippling. Now after you put the next layer of batting behind here, you're going to straight stitch using the same color you're going to use out here for your finish, straight stitch with regular thread all the way around the outside, and then you are ready to do either your stippling or your channel quilting. I have asked my very close friend, Louise Baird, to come and demonstrate this for you. Louise is a master machine artist and is a regular contributor to both Martha's Sewing Room and So Beautiful Magazine. Louise, welcome to the show. Thank you, Martha. Um, like Martha said, this is really pretty easy. When I first started doing this, I thought I could do it all in one step, but it turned out to be easier to do the shadow applique first and then do the trapunto second. Okay, I'm going to repeat the steps that Martha did uh, just a little while ago in that I trace my design on a sheer fabric, place a uh, color fabric behind it, do a tiny zigzag, and then trim away the excess. Okay, and then add another color, whatever color. And again, this is, since this is shadow applique, you do work uh, foreground to background instead of the other way as in regular applique. After that, you will stitch and trim so that it's nice and even. And the neater you are right now, the neater your finished project is going to be. 
Okay. okay. The last color on this design is the green. And again, I would tr stitch all the way around and even in inside detail lines if they have any. Trim away the excess so that just the green is showing. And then here is another sample of just the tiny little buttonhole stitch. Okay. After um, all of the shadow applique is done, then you want to do your first layer of batting. In the first layer of batting, you use a tiny zigzag with either wash away thread or invisible thread. And I found that either one of these really works very well. Uh, the invisible thread, you really can't see it when you work with it. After the first layer is stitched on the outside lines only, flip it over and trim away the excess. And you can see that the inside stitching is not done. Okay, now I'm, let me move this aside. Now to do the channel quilting or straight stitch quilting, one of the things I uh, like to use is a walking foot. And this is a walking foot. Most machines you can purchase um, an optional foot for walking and that helps the uh, feeding of the fabric evenly, evenly. Okay, but I'm gonna do a little bit of stippling. And so I've got my darning or embroidery foot on. Now this is the way the embroidery foot comes. It's a, usually a complete little circle like this or oval. But I usually cut out the front of mine. I purchase huh. an extra one and cut out the front so that I can see better. But when you do cut out the front, you don't have the warranty on that foot anymore <laughs> because you've uh, changed it. Okay, so I'm going to put that aside, and I've got this ready to start stitching. And um, first thing I'm going to do is to stitch. I've already got it stitched all the way around my um, design, the flower part. I'm going to pull up my bobbin thread and put it up underneath my needle. I'm sorry, underneath the foot, so that I can start stitching. Put your hands around the outside edges, and now if you run your machine at a moderate, steady speed, you can run, uh, get the little stippling stitches really even. Now right now I've got my machine set on really slow, so I'm going to stop and make my machine go faster. Now are your feed dogs up or down? My feed dogs are down. Okay. With the free motion. So I'm going to run the machine at a moderately fast, steady speed and just do a little bit of doodling. It's sort of like uh, puzzle pieces. It looks, they look like little puzzle pieces. Yes. And they Except usually <laughs> don't overlap. Now the smaller or tighter you make the stitches, um, the area, the flatter the finished project will be. Okay, so again, just make it as um, uneven. You don't want to do it too even because then it looks, um, it doesn't look as neat that way. Okay. And that and is called stippling. Stippling. <laughs> mm -hmm. And then the channel quilting is just when you stitch straight. Right. The channel quilting is uh, just straight stitching uh, lines. And again, okay. usually I'll draw a diagonal line in both directions and then stitch with about a quarter of an inch in between. Again, the closer the straight stitches are, uh, straight stitch lines are, then the flatter the background will be and the more the trapunta will stand up. Oh, Louise, that is absolutely beautiful. And I think that our viewers will think it's a little bit easier than they did a few minutes ago. <laughs> and now we have a really, really wonderful Shadow Trapunto home decorating project for you. This is such a fun pillow that Louise has designed and made. I think it would be wonderful in either a boy's or a girl's room on a sun porch, but where I really, Louise, think it would be great would be if anybody's so fortunate as to have a lake house or a beach house. Louise has done all kinds of interesting things. First of all, to make it look like the sun is really shining, she's used metallic thread for the stippling. She's also done a satin stitch for the mast of the boat. And for the waves, let me turn this a little bit, she's done big stippling where it really does look like ocean waves. Louise, show us how you made this adorable pillow, please. Okay. Um, again, I used um, a fabric that you can see through. And this one, instead of the uh, Batiste, we used Argandy. And you can really see through the Argandy really well. So it, it's a great uh, work for uh, fabric for shadow work. 
Okay, the first thing with shadow applique, uh, since this is shadow trapunto, the shadow applique, you always have to work foreground to background. So the first thing that needs to be done is the waves. So you just put a block of fabric under there and you would use a tiny zigzag in the color of the fabric that you're working with and then turn it over and trim away the excess. Okay, on this one, I've already got the water trimmed away and now I've got the boat because that's what's next. Okay, now when I did, when I decided to do the uh, sails, I couldn't find just the right fabric that I wanted to use. So instead of looking any further for the fabric, what I did was to use a decorative stitch on my machine on a piece of plain fabric. Oh, Louise, and, I love that. <laughs> and again, if you do use a decorative stitch, be sure that you put a stabilizer behind. Now, my fabric, I've already pulled the stabilizer off, and it's ready to use. But if you don't have a stabilizer uh, behind it, it'll kind of crinkle up and, <laughs> and pull up. Okay, so in this one, I have added my sails and also the, uh, the little Flag. Little sail, little, <laughs> little flag, in the sun here, and um, I'm ready to do the trapunto. So I add a layer of batting. Oh, one of the things I forgot to say was that on this design, it needed a sky. So I put the sky That's right. behind everything, and then place the batting. Stitch around the bat, around your design that you want to stand out. And on this design, it's only the uh, the boat the sail, the little flag in the sun. I didn't want it to stand out behind the uh, sky or the water, so I only stitched there. I'm going to turn this over, and you can see that this would need to be trimmed away. And again, you trim it completely away. And now this step, remember, is done with either uh, the wash away basting thread or the invisible thread. If you use the wash away basting thread, that stitch will be completely gone when you're finished. Um, the invisible thread will not really show at all if you do use invisible thread. Now I'm gonna do just a little bit of stippling here. I've already started by pulling up my bobbin thread. My feed dogs are down so that they're not in the way. And you sort of make a little hoop around uh, the wherever you're stitching with your hands and run your machine at a moderate speed and just doodle. And uh, when you're doing the doodling, if you will run your machine at the same speed or steady, you will get a nicer stipple stitch. Okay. Also, one of the things that you need to do with this stitch also is to go ahead and stitch around the design that you want uh, completely to stand out. Now on this design, I really haven't done that satin stitch yet for the mast or the rays of the sun, but it's basically ready to finish stippling now. Okay, you'll stipple it and then you'll put in your final decorative stitches. Correct. Well, Louise, that is such a wonderful technique and such a really nice project. Thank you. And next we have a really fascinating craft for you. I am so pleased to have as my guest today my daughter, Joanna Pullen Hammett. Joanna is a recent graduate of Texas Christian University in fashion promotion, and she has recently joined me in my business. Joanna, welcome to the show. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. Today, I'm going to show you how to make a light switch cover. And a light switch cover will look like this when you're finished. This is the front, and that's the back. First, you take your material and you cut it out, allotting two inches on each side for, of your light switch cover. Next, you make an X in the center with a box and cut out your little X. Then you get your sticky adhesive tape, unpeel it, it's sticky on both sides, and place it on your material. Then you take your light switch cover Place it on the material, fold your material back as so, all the way around. And remember, if you have extra material, you feel free to cut it off. And if for some reason the sticky adhesive tape does not complete the whole piece of fabric, you can use your glue 
and glue around like so. So it will look like this once you have glued it. Finally, you take your trimming of your choice and trim all the way around your plate and you have a designer plate. Isn't that pretty? You know what, Joanna, That's that one will be beautiful like for a living room with those pretty shades of uh, taupe and brown. But I think it would also be cute for a baby's room, maybe taking wallpaper instead of fabric. You can or, use anything. Or gingham. Uh -huh. or. I think you could, or a kitchen, you could take your wallpaper or your fabric. I think they'd be nice in any room. I think so too. Next, I have a wonderful quilt to share with you. I think this heirloom quilt is one of the most beautiful things we've ever had on the whole five years of Martha's Sewing Room. It's made out of a wonderful, wonderful baby blue handkerchief linen. It has lots of antique ecru laces and it also has a wonderful purchase trim that's kind of just a ribbon trim with a little gold in it. Now the square we're going to talk about today is this absolutely wonderful fan. As you can see, it has miters here, miters here. There is a baby daisy entredose stitch that comes up and down here. Gathered lace has been entredose stitched down and there's a beautiful uh, silk organza baby blue ribbon that has been tied. Now come on over here and let's see how to make that square. I absolutely adore that fan square. First of all, you're going to trace off your fan onto your blue fabric. Then I'm going to draw the miter lines in between each piece of the fan. I have the miter lines here. Now then, after I do my stitching, here I've already done my Baby Daisy wing needle entredose stitching all the way up to the edges of the fan. Let's go ahead and miter. Some of you might remember that when we miter, we do a pin at the top, and a pin at the bottom and then I'm going to fold it back on itself, remove the top pin to get it through both layers and it makes a perfect miter. Now I want to show you one little trick right here. On this one where it's miter, there's a little tiny bit of the lace fold sticking out. Not to worry, this is the magic principle of mush it. Some of you might have found that principle with me before, but when there's a little lace sticking out, just take the principle of mush it and mush it under, and it's not going to show at all once you get your, I uh, guess I should stick a pen in there, and I hate to have my fingers in your way. Anyway, now then that is all of a sudden magically fixed, no problem at all. All right, you know we like the easy way of doing everything, so mush it is one of my wonderful principles. All right, let's do this next one. Pin at the top. Now then we're going to do a pin at the bottom. I'm going to fold it back on itself. This time I'm removing the bottom pin, putting it through two layers, and once again a perfect miter is folded in. At this point, I would like to show you how to pin stitch it. Now, I have a stabilizer underneath here, and you can see those cute little Baby Daisy uh, uh, wing needle entredose stitches that I've made. Now, I'm using a beautiful pin stitch. I'm going to look real carefully. All right, looks like I'm at the bottom here. Okay, now then I'm going to lift my presser foot turn and I'm going to use this pin stitch. Now if you do not have a pin stitch or entredeau wing needle stitching on your machine, you can simply zigzag. You do not have to have a really fancy sewing machine to do any heirloom sewing. I promise you that. Although if you do have some of these wonderful stitches, this is certainly the time to enjoy using it. Now then, as you can see, I just simply stop and go around the corners. Now there's not a sewing machine manufacturer in the world that recommends sewing over pins. So I am going to take the pin out before I go down to the corner, and I think you get the idea of how easy it is to, to wing to excuse me wing needle that was a Madeira applique stitch down. Now after you finish stitching down, let's look back at this one. It's so pretty. It's done in pink. I hope you can see it real clearly. After you finish the pin stitching all the way around the top of the fan, then you pull the thread that's in the French lace, gather it up, and pin it along the bottom because this fan has a beautiful gathered French lace along the bottom. On the ends, you just turn it under. No problem. Don't worry about that little raw edge underneath there. It will never show. Then you're going to, in this case, 
I did a wing needle entredeau that was a baby daisy stitch to stitch this beautiful gathered lace down. So I've used wing needle pin stitching or Madeira applique stitching here. That's kind of like a blanket stitch. And then I've used a wing needle baby daisy to attach this really beautiful gathered lace. Now, do you see how this is all peekaboo right in here? After I finish the whole thing, all of the stitching, then I go in behind now this side, I do not have it cut. I'll go in behind and trim away the fabric from behind there. And that makes what we call peekaboo lace. As you can see, you can see right through the lace there. And I will just trim away so it will make this little lace peekaboo. Isn't that a pretty fan? I really think that's one of the prettiest quilt squares I have ever seen. And next, I would like to invite you to come along to my attic with me for another wonderful turn of the last century surprise. I have a really beautiful white turn of the century blouse for you. This is a beautiful neckline. It starts with a tiny little baby uh, gathered, slightly gathered edging, two pretty folded tucks, and a piece of insertion. By the way, the blouse is made of a handkerchief linen, very, very lightweight. Then you can see there is curved lace that comes around the neckline, straight lace pieces that go all the way down the front, one, two, three, four folded release tucks on either side. And I want you to look at this beautiful hand embroidery that comes around here. Now, those of you that are so fortunate to own these wonderful embroidery machines, you can do white on white embroidery with your machine now and make that same look. Coming on down the blouse is some very unusual lace shaping. Let me hold it out for you so you can see a little bit. It's shaped into rectangles with some release tucks at the top. Can you see how the rectangle's on one side, and then there's a middle rectangle, and there's another rectangle on the other side? Absolutely beautiful lace shaping that would be just as beautiful today as it was a hundred years ago. I always love to show you the backs of these blouses. They're so pretty. This one has a covered placket with the little buttons. You have to open the placket to see the buttons. and has one, two, three, four folded tucks on either side of the blouse. Absolutely beautiful, and it would be very beautiful to produce it today also. Now let me turn it around here. For our Sewing from the Heart segment for today, I have a really wonderful letter from June Nielsen from Corvallis, Oregon. She writes the purpose of the Quilts from Caring Hands. By the way, her, her organization is called Quilts from Caring Hands. It is a nonprofit organization whose mission is to create quilts for children at risk. June writes, the primary purpose of Quilts from Caring Hands is to make quilts for children at risk. Some of these children are the homeless, those in foster care, drug addicted, AIDS infected, abused, as well as visually impaired children and infants of teen mothers. Uh, that she, then she tells about the volunteers in this organization. Quilts from Caring Hands volunteers make baby, crib, and twin size quilts, fill toiletry bags with personal care items, and knit hats. Our volunteers assemble tactile quilts and toys for visually impaired children also. Pre-Braille activity books for preschool children are also created for visually impaired children. And then another purpose that's written here on this wonderful brochure, each quilt we make for a child is unique. So apparently each one is personalized. And they have a really neat little logo. It has a hand that's held up like this, and there's a heart in the middle of that hand. This just sounds like a wonderful group. And all of you uh, ladies, and perhaps gentlemen too, out in Corvallis, Oregon, Quilts from Caring Hands, I really want to thank you for what you're doing. You know, you just never know how important this quilt is to a child or to a family. And I think that quilts are really comfort items. I know I love to wrap up in a quilt. It makes me feel all safe and secure. And I have a feeling that these children have the same feelings when you present your wonderful quilts from Caring Hands. Thank you so much for joining me in my sewing room today. And I would certainly like to issue you a very special invitation to join me next time.